Iodine is critical for so many functions within the body, but unfortunately, a lot of us are not getting enough of it. In the Western world, governments have made an effort to supplement it in food, most commonly salt and bread, but is that enough? And what if you don't consume these foods? Symptoms of an iodine deficiency can be unexpected weight gain, hair loss, fatigue, dry skin, feeling cold all the time, and for women specifically, heavy or irregular periods. Do any of these sound like you? In this video, I'm going to talk about what iodine is, why it's important, how you can increase your intake, and my personal experience with adding more iodine into my diet. So if you want to know more about iodine, Keep watching. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share and make sure to subscribe. And make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook where I share new posts every single day. This is the second episode in my series called Nutrients We Are Not Getting Enough Of. Last episode, we talked about salt and how reducing your intake and eating a low salt diet can actually be very harmful. I heard a lot of feedback after that video of people who had increased their salt intake and experienced numerous health benefits. So if you want to know more about salt, make sure to check that video out after this one. But anyway, on to today's video. Today, we are talking about iodine. What is iodine? Iodine is an essential mineral that is found in soil and ocean waters. This really is one nutrient that is not talked about nearly enough. In the 1920s, iodine started being added to salt. This was in an attempt to prevent goiter, which is an enlargement of the thyroid gland and caused by iodine deficiency. Goiter was becoming more and more common, so they were trying to get iodine into everyone's diets. And iodine still is added to some salts today, but we will get to why this isn't a sufficient source a little bit later in the video. Today, it is estimated that one third of the world's population is not getting enough iodine in their diet. Iodine researchers, Dr. Abraham, Dr. Brownstein, and Dr. Fletches tested 35,000 people, and of that, 96% were deficient. Now, there are two parts to why this is. First off, yes, we are not consuming enough iodine, but second off, there are modern environmental toxins that block iodine absorption. The biggest one being toxic flame retardants. These flame retardants are a mixture of man-made chemicals used to make products less flammable. They are used commonly in plastics, textiles, and electrical equipment. It is estimated that 97% of Americans have toxic flame retardants in their blood. So it's no wonder that we are all low in iodine. And fluoride is another thing that actually blocks iodine absorption. The role of iodine in the body. Iodine is absolutely key for proper thyroid function. There is a myth that too much iodine will impair thyroid function, but this is simply not true. Iodine levels have fallen over 50% in the last 40 years, and thyroid diseases such as hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's disease have only become more common. Your thyroid gland helps regulate the production of hormones, and to create these hormones, you need iodine. Not enough iodine, and your hormone production decreases. This causes your thyroid gland to become underactive, which is also known as hypothyroidism. The hormones being produced control your metabolism, so one side effect of not getting enough iodine is unexpected weight gain. But it's not just our thyroid that needs iodine. Other organs and tissues in the body need it as well. Low iodine levels are associated with breast cancer, fibromyalgia, impaired cognitive function, as well as cysts in the breast and ovaries. Why iodized salt isn't enough. Research shows that just 10% of the iodine added to salt is bioavailable, and when you combine that with the fact that we have been told to reduce our salt intake, 
most people are only getting between 30 and 77 micrograms per day, which is less than half of the RDA, which is 150 micrograms. And we have to remember that the RDA was set at the lowest level to prevent goiter and might not actually be the proper amount to optimize health. Dr. David Brownstein is a thyroid expert and he says that iodine in doses ranging from six to 50 milligrams a day is adequate to provide iodine for the vast majority of the population. How to get more iodine in your diet. Some of the best food sources of iodine include kelp, fish, and dairy. Kelp and seaweed is the most potent source of iodine we can get from food. You can get up to 7,000 micrograms per 100 gram serve. Now, I know some of you have heard me talk about grassland nutrition beef liver capsules on my channel before. I absolutely swear by them. And these capsules, actually, there's two ingredients in them. There's the beef liver, that's the majority, and then there's a little bit of kelp as well. And the purpose of this kelp is actually for iodine. One serve is equal to 300 micrograms of iodine, so it's a good way to get a jump start on your iodine for the day. And if you're on a carnivore diet and are avoiding plants, I will have you know that kelp is not a plant, it's an algae. Whether that's technically carnivore or not, I've talked about this before on my channel, is the point of carnivore to only eat animal foods or is the point to not eat plants? Kelp falls somewhere in the middle. I think there is more to gain from including kelp and seaweed in your diet than there is to lose. Beyond that, oily fish, so salmon, mackerel, and sardines contain about 500 micrograms per 100 gram serve. Milk contains between 25 and 50 micrograms, and cheeses just under 40 micrograms. There isn't really an adequate plant source of iodine, some nuts will have about 20 micrograms per 100 gram serve, but nuts are just so calorically dense that you have to consume a lot of calories in order to get a decent serving of iodine. Now, the fact that iodine is so hard to get from modern foods, combined with the fact that we are exposed to all these toxins that prevent absorption, means that some people do have to supplement especially if you're someone who has a thyroid disease or experiences any of the symptoms I mentioned at the start of this video, so hair loss, fatigue, dry skin, if you're always cold, it may be worth looking into an iodine supplement protocol. I will link the one I've looked at before in the description box down below. My experience with iodine. Now, I did a video a couple of months ago about my experience with amenorrhea. I talked a little bit about how I thought increasing my iodine helped me get my cycle back after two years without it. Now, during this time, I did a lot of testing with doctors and one of them actually did an iodine test on me and found out that I was deficient. At this time, I did start to supplement and after that, I added the beef and kelp liver capsules into my daily routine. Looking back on it now and what I ate before my whole health journey, I guess you can call it, I was probably getting next to no iodine. I did not eat fish growing up. I only really started eating it maybe two years ago now. I didn't like sushi, so I wasn't even getting iodine from the nori wraps. I wasn't even a big milk drinker since I had a bad experience in grade six, a traumatizing experience that I won't talk about now. I was pretty big on cheese though, so <laughs> that might've been what was keeping me alive, but still, I probably was not getting anywhere near enough. Now, I don't think that upping my iodine intake was the complete solution to me getting my cycle back, but I do think it played a big part as well as that. For my entire life, Oh, sorry if TMI, but my periods were always absolutely miserable. So painful, so heavy, so long. Oh my God, I'm, I'm in pain just thinking about it. For one or two days of my period every month, 
I would actually feel completely nauseous. I would get sweaty and feel just really, really sick. Like I couldn't go to school. I would have to call in sick. I couldn't go to work. I would have to call in sick. It was really, really bad. And since I regained it, which was during my time on a carnivore or animal-based diet, by the way, I have not had a single cramp. It has been regular. I get it at the same time every month, like clockwork. It is so much lighter than it used to be and it is so much shorter. I honestly cannot believe that I suffered for so many years thinking that, oh, that's what my life had to be for one week out of every month. And as I said at the start of this video, one of the symptoms of iodine deficiency is heavy or irregular periods. So, oh, I really, I, I really think that adding more iodine into my diet made a difference. There is research that women with low thyroid hormone levels experience more frequent menstrual cycles with heavy bleeding. This is because low thyroid hormone levels disrupt the signals of hormones that are involved in the menstrual cycle. Anyways, guys, that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out my video on salt after this one. And let me know in the comments down below, have you increased your iodine intake? Maybe you tried an iodine supplement protocol. Did you notice a difference? Let me know down below. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you next time. Bye guys.